Lord is your strength. Nehemiah was standing, watching over the people, watching over everything that had to be built up, and he knew that joy was vital for them to be able to accomplish all that God had them to do. Here's the thing. Without joy, you have no strength to continue on in life. Joy is the fuel that enables you to move, that enables you to push, that enables you to persevere, that enables you to run above natural limits and to accomplish kingdom purpose. Nehemiah knew that if Israel was distraught, if they were discouraged, if they were depressed, there's no way they would have the energy to build the kingdom and to build their city the way that Christ created it to be built. As a believer, if you don't have joy in your heart, you're not going to have the strength to build your marriage the way that God created it to be built. You're not going to have the strength to persevere through college. You're not going to have the strength to overcome adversity without joy. You're literally going to be inept and unable to push into all that God has for you. You ever been just discouraged or, or, or just down. I know you're in church and you're supposed to be happy all the time. But you ever experienced a time where things, they're, they're just not going your way? Where it just seems that everything is just piling up on you? Where it seems that almost the world is becoming overbearing? If you watch how your life is at that moment, you'll realize it's difficult to get out of bed. It's difficult to even put a smile on your face. It's difficult to push. It's difficult to move. Some of my summer people can let me know about this. The last two weeks of my life has been the most productive weeks of 2012. And you know why? Because the temperature finally tipped over 60 degrees. I don't know about you. I get depressed in the cold. I get miserable in the cold. I don't like, I kick my dog when it's cold. Not really. But I just don't like winter. And all of a sudden, the heat goes up, and I'm up. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to move. And all of a sudden, I feel strength coming to my life. That's what joy does for you. When you have the joy of God, you're able to run. You're able to persevere. You're able to overcome every circumstance. All of my men that watch basketball or watch football, they can almost tell you, I can watch a team's huddle before the game and come pretty close to predicting who's going to win that game. If it was my days back in football, we played for Randallstown, and we were worse than the Bad News Bears, and we would come together, and we'd say, okay, guys, um, it's game time, and uh, we don't want to die out there because, you know, we're young, <laughs> and we have a whole life ahead of us. And, and about 10 feet this way, the other team, Northwood, is sitting there saying, we're going to kill them. We're going to smash them. They're not going to live past today. <laughs> they had bounties before bounty was even in. And you could tell from the beginning, uh, they're going to win. Not necessarily because they're more talented, even though because they were, but because the joy empowered them and strengthened them, the passion to run, to persevere, to accomplish all that they were setting out to accomplish. Do you know that if you don't have joy in your life, that being a Christian will be one of the biggest burdens you have ever taken on? You ever met a Christian like that? <sighs> Can't cuss people out. <laughs> yeah, I started right there. Because I'm a Christian. Can't cut you off. Because I'm a Christian. Got to go to prayer. Because I'm a Christian. You know, sometimes I want to pull people like that aside and say, um, you do know Jesus rose from the dead, right? You know he's not still hanging on the cross. He's not still in the tomb. There is life in Christ, and that life should also be in us. You know, when they came to Jesus, and Jesus says, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. He says, come on to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. What he was talking about is everybody who's walking around with the burden of religion and the, and the laws that the Pharisees have heaped on top of you. He said, throw those off. Yes, I have laws. Matter of fact, my laws are higher than the law of Moses. But when the joy of the Lord is inside of your life, it's almost like it's nothing to you. You're able literally 
to run and to persevere beyond every circumstance. Without joy, I would go as far to saying as you're not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere in your faith. You're not going anywhere in your career. You're not going anywhere in your relationships. You will be stuck without joy because joy is the fuel that brings mobility. The second question I want to ask is this. How do I sustain joy? How do I sustain joy? I know that joy is important. I know that I'm not really going to move anywhere without joy. But let's be honest. There's going to be about a million situations in the next 24 hours that are designed to steal my joy. Am I seriously expected to always be joyful no matter what? The Bible says in Luke chapter 10, and this is the same story. Jesus replied, the disciples came to Jesus and he had sent them out to preach and all this different kind of stuff. And he says, Lord, you would not believe demons trembled in your name. We healed the sick. We won the lottery. I mean, God, it was the greatest day of our lives. And Jesus responded like this. He says in verse 18, he says, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing it will harm you. However, do you know there's no bigger killjoy than Jesus? You come in, Jesus, I'm telling you, I'm dominating. I got a 4.0. I didn't have to pay taxes this year. Jesus, my life is all awesome. And he's like, however, don't focus on that. He says, you should rejoice that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. What he says was your salvation is really where you should find the origin of your joy from, not the victories that you encounter. What are you saying, God? That, that, that's kill joy. This is what Jesus knew. Jesus knew just a couple of minutes from now and a couple of days that the disciples were going to cast out another demon out of a little boy, and they were not going to be able to do it. Jesus was saying that experience that you had just now, that was temporary. And if you place your joy in that temporary situation, you will be up and down every single day, every single week, depending on are you having victories or are you going through valleys. But Jesus said, if you place your faith in the outcome, in the fact that no matter what you face, you win, that you're more than a conqueror, that he's already fixed the fight for you. God says that your joy will not be hit back and forth based on the circumstances that you face. One of the reasons why our joy is up and our joy is down is because we have joy when we have money, and then we do not have joy when we're broke. Somebody say amen. amen. We have joy when our employer likes us, and we do not have joy when they pile the other person's work on our desk. Come on now. But all of a sudden, when your joy is based in the fact that, hold a second, my eternity is secure, my future is decided, the biggest problem in my life is taken care of. And if the biggest problem in my life is taken care of, there's nothing else that I should even dare worry about because I know that it is secure in God. All of a sudden, your joy is able to be sustained through every single circumstance and situation. Do you know in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, what we just read, it says, for the joy set before him, Jesus endured the cross and was able to sit at the right hand of the Father. Do you know how Jesus made it 33 years before he went to the cross? He saw his death in his future. He saw his pain, but he looked past that circumstance, and he says, on the other side of that, my name is going to be above every name, and every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that I am Lord. On the other side of that circumstance, I'm going to be able to lead a young man named Stephen Chandler into the kingdom of God. And on the other side of that, there's going to be millions and billions of believers that are going to be able to walk into eternity because of this momentary situation. Jesus literally went to the cross with joy because he wasn't looking at the cross. He was looking at the victory that was already guaranteed on the other side. If you keep your eyes focused on your situation, I can't help you. God can't help you because he said, fix your eyes on me, the author and the finisher 
the perfecter of your faith. And then all of a sudden, you'll begin to find that you're walking through situations, but they're not affecting you the same way. You see, cancer is big, but cancer is temporary. Somebody say a better amen. And I'm trying to think of something worse than that. Bankruptcy is, is bad, but bankruptcy is, is temporary. Somebody say amen. amen. Heartache is bad, but heartache is temporary. If you keep your eyes fixed on the temporary, your life will be like a house built on sand. I, you know, I, I know I'm not a very nice person. And I'm working on that because, you know, you, you got to be nice to be a Christian. But I love going to the beach, oh, this is going to make me sound horrible, and seeing the little kids build these awesome, you know, castles in the sand, but they build it too close to the water. You know what I mean? <laughs> they're not that bright. And I mean, they're putting all their work into this castle, and I'm just like, wait for it, wait for it. Go push. <laughs> you know, you got to kind of look away. Yeah, I knew that was coming. Some of y'all, that's your kid, and now you're upset. <laughs> now you know why they don't let me work in the children's ministry. <laughs> but some of us, we're like that little kid building our joy too close to circumstances. And every time that circumstance comes in, <sighs> there goes our joy. And let me guarantee you this, that circumstance is guaranteed. Because the Bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood. Not if, 